Welcome to the northeast of England. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Caroline. I'm spending a week going on adventures in the area of the UK that I grew up in. Over the last few episodes, I've hiked in search of waterfalls in the North Pennines area of outstanding natural beauty. Got my Roman geek on at Vindolanda. I took time to be a big kid at Annick Gardens, swinging by the unique barter books to round the day off. I've explored the ginormous grounds of the National Trust's Cragside and the interior of the main house too. I've checked out a handful of South Shield's main attractions from a tour inside of Suta Lighthouse, a wander along Marsden's Beach, a history lesson and a quick warm up over a coffee in its grotto, and a bit more history at Arbea. It's been a fun filled, varied few days, and today I'll not be too far from South Shields as I'll pay a visit to Pension Monument and Finkel Abbey. Good morning and welcome to the Isle of Durham's monument, also known as Lord Lambton. But if you're local to this area, you would never know that it was called these things as everyone just knows it as being Pension Monument. This morning, we're gonna be having a bit of a wander around this Pension Monument area, finding out a little bit more about its history. And then we're gonna be heading over to County Durham and checking out a place called Finkel Abbey as well. I grew up about a seven or so minute drive in the car from Pension Monument and so as a child my parents used to bring me here quite often. They run events and I believe they still do and I definitely have childhood memories of boiling an egg with my parents, painting it and coming to Pension Monument and specifically the hill to roll the Easter egg down the hill in a competition with loads of other local children. The other thing that I remember about this place as a child is my parents would say you can't go up onto the top of it anymore and that's because back in the 1920s a 15 year old boy sadly fell off the top and died however I'm learning that back in 2011 the National Trust started to open up access to the top on select days but in 2021 their website says that it's closed at the moment I'm not entirely sure why all of the pillars are completely solid with stone that I believe was brought over from Londonderry all except for one and one of them has got a staircase inside of it giving access up to the top but there's a locked gate across the front of it and that just gives me flashbacks to my childhood memories of always seeing that locked gate maybe in the future I might come back again and hopefully I'll pick a day when the National Trust do have it open because I would love to get up to the top just having grown up always looking at it and never having had that opportunity to go up there the reading that I've been doing into Pension Monument hinted that it was a very scaled down version of the Temple of Hephaestus. Having come along to it with my friend Laura who is a classics teacher, she's been explaining to me that normally in these sorts of temples you would find that a very skilled craftsman would carve into the stonework the story of whichever Greek god the temple was erected to commemorate. Specifically the pediment at the top, now I'm learning all of these new words right now so I'm just sharing it with you as I'm learning it. So the pediment's like the triangular bit at the top and then underneath that you've got the metopes which are the square bits of stone and both of those would usually have the story etched into to it. So I think what's maybe quite nice about Pension Monument is that you could come here and in instead of looking at a story that's been given to you, you can look at those blank metopes and look at the blank pediment and either fill it in with your own story that's personal to you. You could fill it in with the story of Lord Lambton or you could fill it in in your mind with the story of any Greek god of your choice. The monument on top of Pencher Hill can be seen for miles and miles and apparently on a really good day it can be seen for up to 50 miles but definitely not on a day that is as cloudy as today. Growing up as a child, whenever we were taken on a long journey somewhere down south, we always knew that we were almost home as soon as Pension Monument came into view because it could just be seen from the A1M as we were approaching home. 
at night time it was always lit up by those very glowy yellowy orange lights that were prolific on street lamps as well and so it was always of the same shade more recently they've installed much more modern lights which can be changed to lots of different colors when the national trust had their 100th anniversary the monument was lit up in green to commemorate the national trust I remember after the Paris attacks, lots of monuments got lit up in red, white, and blue to show solidarity with France. And apparently, Pench Monument was one of those monuments that was. And much more recently, during the pandemic, when everyone was in lockdown, to thank the NHS workers, it was lit up in blue. Despite it being on such a high elevation, which allows for it to be seen for so many miles, it's not actually too bad of a walk. The National Trust have definitely improved these steps. I remember as a child, it was a lot more perilous than what it is these days. Cars can get most of the elevation because I would say that it's somewhere between about a five and a 10 minute walk up to the top and it doesn't really take it out of you at all. So if it's something that you would fancy coming along to see, so long as you can manage the steps, I'd say it's fine, definitely come along because it is really quite interesting. We've just finished up at Pench Monument, a short but sweet visit, a little bit chilly up on the top of the hill. And now we are jumping in the car. It's going to be about a 15 minute drive to Fincott Abbey. Take the next left towards Chester Road, A183. A few Finkel Abbey facts that I'm picking up as I'm going around. It is owned by the English Heritage, but very clearly on their website they've said that it's completely free to access. There is a car park on the side of the River Weir that Finkel Abbey is on, but it's paid for and it's separate to the English Heritage. My brother tipped me off and said that on Cocken Road, which is on the other side of the River Weir, there is free parking in a lay-by and we did not struggle at all to get parked in there. And there are quite a few steps, so it is a bit of an incline to get down to the footbridge going across the river but geographically very very close to the abbey. Finkel is pronounced as Finkel but it definitely looks like Finch Hale but both all of the locals are calling it Finkel and also on the English Heritage's website it very clearly states that it's pronounced as Finkel Abbey. Finkel Abbey came about thanks to St. Godric. He was a chap born in 1070, which is a time in history that I'm not so familiar with, I think because it's so long ago, it tends to blow my mind a little bit to try and make connections with it. He was quite an adventurous fella, he was a sailor, he was a merchant, and after his time of exploring the globe, he then decided to live a solitary life and become something of a hermit and decided on this area along the River Weir to then build the abbey. Wandering around the site, I can definitely understand where he saw that appeal from. He lived until he was 100 years old and died here at the Abbey. And again, I'm guessing back in the 1100s that it was probably quite unusual for people to live that long. About 25 years after he died, it was then taken over by monks. By the 1400s, the abbey had become a holiday retreat for monks. Four of them were allowed to be here at a given time, but still overseen by superiors. Even though they were on holiday, two of them still had to be on duty at any given time, carrying out all of their roles, whilst the other two only had to carry out a couple of roles, for example, such as mass and vespers. And for the remaining time, they were allowed to walk religiously and honestly within the fields. <laughs> 
Despite there being loads of rules about how the monks were supposed to go about their lives when holidaying here, there have been records to show that monks have been reprimanded for keeping hunting dogs and taking them out on hunts. This was apparently very problematic back in the Middle Ages and therefore, as far as the vows go that monks would have taken, probably wasn't too problematic. Yet another short but sweet visit, but I have to come away saying I'm really impressed with this place. Similar to where we were yesterday at the fort in South Shields, it was completely free to access. I just assumed that it was going to not be as impressive as what it's ended up being. And again, given how long ago it was originally built, I thought we would have been in far worse disarray, but the building, it just structurally, yes it's ruined but there's things like the stonework that would have been in between the stained glass windows still intact there were staircases which yes i appreciate english heritage have had to cordon off but still intact they've not just crumbled away and then there was also an undercroft that we could go walking under and again i'm sure that english heritage would not allow for us to go under there if it was structurally unstable the area is beautiful, it's got like woodland trails going around both sides of the river. There were signs for a picnic field, which I did have a little bit of a wander along to. I was expecting there to be some like picnic tables and some really nice sweeping views of the river, but unfortunately there was just a solitary bin at the edge of the field and the flowers had grown quite a bit on the side, so you didn't have the best views of the river. But where the shop is and also where the abbey is, there are a few picnic benches and and you've got much better views of the river so I wouldn't actually bother going all the way along to where that picnic field was but certainly on a slightly sunnier and slightly warmer summer's day than what I'm experiencing at the moment I would recommend you know coming along here bringing along a picnic as well